All right, guys, week six of the college football season is already underway, and it's a loaded Saturday slate. I've got five, count them five, underdogs locked and loaded for you today on the Power Five. Going to be completely transparent with all of you. Went back and forth for quite a while on what was going to make the cut this week, but these are the five I've landed on. A reminder. It's a 117, 94, and 5 overall run with free picks on this show. I'm also number one at wagertalk.com and NFL since the start of the regular season, not to mention number two with all football this season. Going back to the end of last season, I'm on a 31 and 16 run in college with client releases. Go ahead and let me know what you think of these selections down in the comments be section below. If you agree, don't be afraid to smash that like button. Always appreciate your support. So here we go. Number one, Noon Eastern. I'm taking North Carolina plus two and a half at home versus Pitt. It's a real do or die spot for Mac Brown. Last two weeks, I've seen his Tar Heels give up 70 points in an embarrassing loss to James Madison, then blow a 20 to nothing lead to rival Duke. Lost 21 20. Meanwhile, Pitt, they're unbeaten, both straight up and against the spread. However, two of those four straight up victories. So far, very fortunate for the Panthers, who erased double-digit fourth-quarter deficits against both Cincinnati and West Virginia. Their other two wins were against Kent State and Youngstown State. Believe it or not, the FCS team is probably the better of those two. Uh, I know Pitt is off a bye here, so the schedule favors them, especially with North Carolina off the two gut punches. But I certainly did not anticipate Pat Narduzzi's team being this successful, at least coming into the season. Definitely would have not thought They'd be favored here in Chapel Hill where they're 0-7 straight up and 1-6 against the spread all time. I will trust my numbers here. Might as well sprinkle a little money uh, on the UNC money line, although that was obviously a disaster last week. Number two, Vanderbilt, plus 12.5 in the first half versus Alabama, 4-15 Eastern. Talked about this for a little bit on Friday's edition of the Morning Wager with Mark Zinno. To quote Mark, if Vandy ain't covering early, then they ain't covering late. Obviously, this is a massive letdown spot for Alabama, who had their incredible start last week, then had to hold on for dear life and actually come from behind at home to beat Georgia. There is zero chance that Bama comes out with the same intensity this week that we saw last week in Tuscaloosa. Meanwhile, Vandy, they're off a bye. Couldn't ask for a better setup. Clark Lee, the head coach, he's on the record as saying he wants to make this a 10-possession game. Okay, expect a lot of time to run between plays. Vandy's going to slow this thing down. It's the only way they've got a chance Saturday afternoon in Nashville. I agree with the approach. By the way, all three of the commies games against FBS foes this season have been decided by seven points or less. Not saying this one's going to be that close or at least end up that close. But two weeks ago, Vandy did take Missouri to double overtime on the road for 30 minutes. I think they can stay within two touchdowns of Bama. Give me Vandy plus the points in the first half. Number three, all right, how about Arkansas getting 13 and a half in Fayetteville against number four, Tennessee, Woo Pig Suey. 7.30 Eastern kickoff here. Now, we don't want to play the Hogs in the first half. Why? Because Tennessee head coach Josh Heupel is as profitable as it gets when it comes to covering first half spreads. Plus, the Vols are coming off a bye. They're a perfect 4-0 against the spread as well. But this is the first time Tennessee's defense is going to be tested, guys. Arkansas should have beaten Oklahoma State earlier in the season in Stillwater. Uh, they also could have beaten Texas A&M last week inside Jerry World. I think at home, Bobby Petrino's offense can stay inside two touchdowns. Let's see what happens when that Tennessee defense gets punched in the mouth a little bit. Should be noted, Arkansas head coach Sam Pittman, he's been fantastic as an underdog. 28-1 and one against the spread with eight outright upsets. That's 20 wins, eight losses, and one push. But eight outright upsets. Arkansas plus the points there. Now let's hit the late night card. And yeah, let's take Cal plus the 10 and a half against Miami, Florida. Yes, this is another dog that when I talked to Mark Zinno on the morning wager, I was a little lukewarm on, but there is deny no denying the fact. This is a tough spot for the U. Flying cross country after a somewhat miraculous win against what had been a struggling Virginia Tech team. The Canes, they trailed most of that game and needed the officials to wave off in apparent Hail Mary completion at the end. Not saying it was the wrong call, but certainly... Uh, it could have gone the other way. Uh, keep in mind, that was at home. And again, Virginia Tech had really been sucking most of this year, let's be honest. Two weeks ago, Miami really struggled on the road. 
most of the way until USF's quarterback got hurt. That Virginia Tech game, again, uh, apologize if I just said this, but that was at home as well. Cal's the rested team here. Off a bye after losing to Florida State two weeks ago. You may recall, I was on Florida State against Cal. It was a 3% client release. Cal, though, certainly could have and maybe even should have uh, won that game. They outgained the Knolls 410 to 284. With ESPN Game Day coming to Berkeley for the very first time, you got to think there's no way Cal gets blown out here, right? The late kickoff, 1030 Eastern, probably works against Miami. Jade Knott can be a difference maker for the Bears on offense, and we really haven't seen Miami head coach Mario Cristobal do something dumb yet this season. It's only a matter of time before he does, right? Take the points with Cal. One more late game. Why is Arizona laying a full touchdown against Texas Tech? I know the Wildcats were a very profitable team to back last season under Jed Fish, but Fish is now at Washington, and I don't have the same confidence in Brent Brennan. Yes, Zona did just go on the road and upset Utah last week, but the youths were without starting quarterback Cam Rising and went 0 for 4 on fourth down attempts. That'll determine an outcome of a game real quick. Remember, a few weeks ago, in front of a national television audience, this Arizona team got crushed 31 to 7 by Kansas State. Not saying Texas Tech is Kansas State, but the Red Raiders were my lone 5% max bet to date this college football season when they beat Arizona State two Saturdays ago. Last week, they followed that up by beating Cincinnati 44-41. This is a Texas Tech team that could be 5-0, and but they had a very misleading loss at Washington State due to turnovers. They put a lot of points on the board. Arizona does as well. This could be last team who has the ball wins. I make the line closer to a field goal, not a touchdown. Take the points with Texas Tech. Let us now recap the Power Five for Saturday, shall we? North Carolina, plus two and a half versus Pitt. Number two, Vanderbilt, plus 12 and a half in the first half versus Alabama. Number three, Arkansas, plus 13 and a half versus Tennessee. Number four, Cal, plus 10 and a half versus Miami. And number five, Arizona. Pardon me, Texas Tech, plus seven against Arizona. Again, go ahead, let me know what you think of those selections. And don't be shy about dropping your best bets for college football Saturday down in the comments section below. Any questions about any other games I didn't touch on? Those are welcome as well. Love to hear from you guys. Keep the feedback coming. That's what makes the show great. My top plays for Saturday, they are currently locked and loaded at my page, wt.buzz slash bp, of course. As I said earlier, I am number two with all football so far this season at Wager Talk, hitting 64.8% overall with NFL and college. You go back to the end of last season, like I said earlier, I'm 31-16, and 16, my last 47 CFB releases. Two, not one, but two 4% best bets. Highlight Saturday's card for me, but your best move is to take advantage of Wager Talk's latest special offer where you can get the next seven days for only $77. That'll get you covered for NFL on Sunday, the MLB playoffs, any soccer I release as well. Now that's going to do it for Saturday's edition of the Power Five. I really hope you enjoyed it. Again, smash that like button if you did. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Click that bell for instant alerts and you'll be notified when your favorite shows like this one or the Morning Wager drop. So until next time, everybody, uh, let's catch some tickets.